Hello, this is a quick introduction, just four minutes long, about how you may be able to bring secure software development practices to your organization successfully, even while so many others have failed. Secure development, sometimes called product security, is a challenge that has vexed software developers almost since the first lines of code were written decades ago. So if it's something that's troubling you, you're not alone. Very few companies have licked this particular problem. But here's what's really puzzling about it. We know that product security is an actual problem. Just watch the news for a few days and you'll probably learn of a new incident. And we can describe the problem in great detail. There are top 10 lists available for any technology you might use. We even know exactly what steps we can take to fix the problem. The tools and techniques are well understood. But we haven't actually solved the problem. So that raises the obvious question, why is it that both the data and our own experiences show that we're even worse at it today than we were one, two, even three decades ago? Well, no doubt there are several reasons for that, but in my career as a technology leader, I've developed elegant solutions to many technical problems. Unfortunately, the implementation of those solutions always seems to require the participation of these things called human beings, people, people with personalities, with emotions, with agenda. And if I don't engage those people the right way, my brilliant solution stays on the shelf. It turns out that the important question isn't what do we do, but rather how do we get human beings to do the things that we already know? For example, in software, every development organization has a capacity. We may not be able to quantify that capacity exactly, but we know that it's finite. Against that capacity, we levy demands. And I've never seen an organization whose capacity exceeds its demands, ever. So there's always a gap representing the stuff that doesn't get done. The challenge with secure development is that in almost all organizations, it's introduced as an additional demand, which means that it merely gets added to the gap. Does this look familiar to you? There are essentially four responses that any organization can have to this situation. The first is to concede defeat. <laughs> the second is to increase capacity. The third, to reduce demand. And the fourth is to reprioritize. But none of these options are acceptable to most managers. They all seem suboptimal for one reason or another. Uh, okay, by now you may be saying, wow, Bill, thanks for the depressing downer. What now? Well, my approach to product security is based on several factors. The first is the provable fact that current approaches which focus on testing and auditing software after it's produced have simply not solved the problem. We've been doing that for decades and it's only gotten worse. The second is the recognition that human factors and organizational dynamics are what matters when it comes to implementation. The results we seek in business are produced by human beings and what they know is only one factor influencing their performance. Other factors include beliefs, corporate culture, social context, incentives, and constraints. This is arguably the most difficult element, since it demands a level of management, courage, and insight that is, well, rare. The third factor is recognizing an opportunity. The dirty little secret of engineering productivity is that we squander a distressing amount of our capacity on rework. Now, converting rework to added value isn't simple or easy, but I've done it before, and I believe that it is the key to achieving product security at an acceptable cost. Going into the details of how all this works would take some time, of course. But maybe you're open to the possibility, at least, that the institutional failures of the past don't necessarily have to define your reality today. If these ideas resonate with you, let's have a more specific and in-depth conversation. Here's how to reach me.